is. Um, having worked the seminar staff for that long, I know being the last one to go is sometimes you guys are going to be falling asleep or just being like, I'm, I want to go home and incorporate what JP taught me or what I learned from James or Jason or whatever. So hopefully I can give you guys um, a little bit of a different perspective um, in multiple ways. Number one, I don't know very much at all about business, to be honest. Um, when he was talking about TTIs and and PS, I, I have no idea what any of that is. Um, I don't know the ROI on basically anything that I do, to be honest. Um, but what I do know and what I've found and what street parking has solidified um, for myself and for Julian is we know how to build a community. And what we do um, at street parking is no different than what you guys do in your affiliates. And I think there's a lot of things that we do um, virtually that you guys could be adding in to build, to make your communities stronger um, at your gyms. So, little history of my community building, I guess, uh, since the, the uh, competing thing is cool, but that's not what you guys are here for. That doesn't help you actually at all, so. Um, in 2008, uh, in the state of Utah, um, Spiel, who spoke yesterday, he was the first affiliate, but didn't have a location yet when I started doing CrossFit. I was a personal trainer at the, at the time. I actually started when I was 17, coaching like Johnny G spin classes and BOSU ball certification. I had um, cardio kickboxing, and then I was a personal trainer. Um, I started coaching um, bigger groups, four to six people, at the personal training studio that I was at um, with CrossFit type training once I had started doing it myself got kicked out of there, by necessity had to open an affiliate because I had nowhere to train my people. Um, nobody knew what CrossFit was when I opened that gym. We had five stall mats and I think like a pull-up bar we made ourselves, some random dumbbells we had bought from, you know, discount stores or like used equipment stores and $2,500 of equipment that I had purchased from money I borrowed from my parents. Uh, within a year we had, so I opened in 2008, within a year we had uh, 125 150 members-ish, and what that's cool and everything, uh, but what was cool to me and what I started to notice was the community that we had. Um, we had 30 people drive 12 hours to the 2009 CrossFit Games just to go watch. They packed into vans, they were so afraid of missing out, um, and that's kind of what I build communities on, or what we build our community on is FOMO, to be honest. Um, and we had 30 people drive 12 hours. And these weren't like young kids. They were people with families and kids and they wanted to go and be together. So um, I moved, I started working on the seminar staff in 2008, um, had uh, my gym all the way through 2011 when I needed to move to California to be with CrossFit full time. I was helping with some of the media stuff and, and stuff for like, like that for them too. I, because I'm not a business person and I'm not organized, knew my strengths and weaknesses and knew that I'm not capable of running a gym remotely. Like I sold it to one of the trainers and you know, let him take that over because I knew that I wasn't capable of like organizing all of that from afar. So what I noticed now is that the community was rare and different because this was one of our trainers. He had been training um, at the gym for at least like a year when, when I moved away. He adopted a different style of training, which was um, very much more part A, B, and C, much more structured, and lost 80% of our members in six months. Um, because it went from being fun, and we're joking around, and we're messing around with each other, to we're here to work out, we're here to be serious, we're here to get results, and write your you know, name, and use your, the percentages, and all that stuff. And I'm not saying that that's, not, that that's wrong to do, but I'm saying that it's just um, something that I noticed, and that was pretty heartbreaking for me, honestly. Um, those members are all still friends with each other, but they all went to a bunch of different places, because the vibe that uh, we had created was lost when we moved. In 2013, um, I ended up working out with the crew at NorCal CrossFit with Jason and Molly and the whole crew that ended up being our team. And we had the most fun together. Um, uh, once again, it was not structured. If James saw the workouts that we would put together, like with our training crew with Jason, he would lose his mind. Like it was, we were making shit up like on the fly. We would be like, I don't know, what do you want to do today? And then it would change like five minutes into it. And then five minutes after we were done, we were randomly doing something else. And then we realized we've done the same movement three days in a row. Like, and that's how Jason and our whole crew trained the entire time that I was there. 
And so in 2013, we had so much fun together and we joked around with each other. And, um, you know, uh, some of us had a pretty good social media following. I was like, you know what? I bet people would love to see this. People need to see how much fun we have and how not serious we take it. All of us are seriously trying to compete, but we still have such a good time and I feel like it's going away from that. So um, I have the idea to start the NC Lab. Does anybody know what that is? Raise your hand if you remember the NC Lab. Okay, nice. So I came to Jason and I was like, Jason, I think we should, uh, I think we should make a website and an Instagram and a Facebook and just post the workouts we're doing. And I remember one of the guys who trained with us, he's like, well, what if, what if people don't get super fit? Like, what if they, they're not as good as us? And I'm like, I, I'm not guaranteeing they're going to the games. I just think it'd be cool for them to feel like they're a part of it, right? So we created a really cool community, a really fun Instagram, and we would post our workouts and I, we would post videos making fun of each other and having this fun, cool community. We did like one camp um, where we sold it out and people came and they worked out with us for a day and it was awesome. And that um, energy followed us through the 2014 and especially the 2015 games when we actually, that same group went and competed as a team. Um, and that was awesome. So the NC Lab ended up kind of going away when people uh, started getting a little bit too worried that we were sharing too much information. It wasn't me. I didn't care. But uh, some, of the, some of the people were worried that we shouldn't give away all of our secrets. And so that's how the NC <laughs> Lab <laughs> died. Um, after 2015, I was injured at the games uh, and decided I was done competing. That was like, OK, I'm. 33 years old and I put my entire life on hold to do this thing. Um, I was still working for CrossFit, but I need, to, I need to figure out what's next. So between 2008, I think he mentioned, between 2008 and two, or 2016, yeah, that window, I worked over 300 seminars for CrossFit all over the world. So I've been to roughly 250 affiliates in person. Um, on every continent, um, military facilities, the nicest gyms ever. Um, pretty much, if you can imagine it, I've seen it as far as affiliates go. Um, and so that's obviously like a really cool eye-opening experience for me and you get to see a lot of, well, I can see why this gym's so successful or I can see maybe why they're not. You can pick up the vibe so fast just by meeting that very first coach or the, the owner right away. Um, so that was, that was a great, learning lesson for me to see what's important um, to build a strong community. When Julian and I met in 2015, uh, I was still in my knee brace. I was working full time for Progenix and also working for uh, CrossFit. And as he mentioned, I was traveling a lot and I started posting um, workouts of me just in like random hotel gyms or like in my hotel room sometimes, or we lived an hour away from each other. So when we got together, like time was limited and we didn't want to drive even though the gym that he worked at was close. It was in LA, so it was far, right? Um, with traffic and everything. So we would work out at his house and his cousin that worked there that wasn't fit at all would work out with us. And we would show him modifying and people loved it. They would tag each other. They would say, oh my gosh, we could do this. Um, let's do this at our house this weekend. All we need is dumbbells for this. I could do this at the hotel. I'm a flight attendant, I'm a pilot. Um, and as uh, he mentioned about Three days before I found out I was pregnant, Julian and I um, started the Street Parking Instagram public page. And our plan was to post some workouts and build a little community of people who were like us, just super busy and um, needed some workouts so that we could not just be the two of us, but share that with people. I've always loved coaching. I've been doing it since before I even found CrossFit and I will do it forever. I like to help people. so. Um, we started that with the goal of opening registration for $19 a month to get 100 members to help us pay our rent. Um, and that was going to be like our little, our little side project. Um, what happened was we, we opened it up and way more people signed up than we had anticipated. I thought that no one was going to sign up because I was pregnant and nobody wants the Miranda pregnant program, they want the Miranda six pack program. And this is not going to work. Like no one's going to be interested in this at all. Um, but they did, they signed up. And as you guys know, it's one thing to get people to sign up. It's another thing to get them to stay for a long time. So uh, when the number of people that joined um, was so high, we were like, oh man, like this is a real thing. Like maybe this could be an actual business that we do. Um, so 
We started out with programming and posting three versions of the workout a day. Um, it was not complicated at all. It was based on the equipment that you have. We would post it on Instagram and we use Wattify for our tracking system and that's how they would pay, that's how they would sign up. Um, but what really changed it for us is, uh, I don't think that I realized you could build a strong community without ever seeing somebody in person. Um, I, we'd kind of done it with the lab, but it was like a bunch of like, it was more us showing off let's be honest, right? Um, this was us helping people. So uh, we started seeing posts of people that are like, I haven't been able to work out for years because I have um, a child who needs 24 hour care because he's got some sort of disability. Or I've got three kids under five and I, as much as I would love to go to my affiliate, it's just not realistic. And I haven't been consistent with working out for years and you guys have completely changed my life. I feel too, way too intimidated to go to an affiliate and now I feel like I can do this, nobody's watching me, I can be barefoot and in my sweatpants and you guys have changed my life. And we're like, oh my gosh, like we're responsible for these people now. Like if we don't deliver and, and keep them moving, like they're gonna, they're gonna fall off. And, and like I, I started panicking a little bit, to be honest, like we're responsible for helping, like these people need our help. Uh, so we kept building it and we kept adding more value and more coaching. And um, in June of 2017, we had roughly 1500 members. In June of last year, we had 5,000 members, which is a really big deal. And actually, running the business, it was just Julian and I until we had about 4,000 members. Um, for the first like year and a half, it was just the two of us with help from one of Julian's best friends with shipping some apparel and stuff like that. But it was just the two of us. We filmed everything on our phones. We did everything on our own phones. We, neither of us knew anything about building websites or video editing or anything. We just did it. Um, it was not the highest quality, but we did it. And uh, then we started hiring people. And today we have 15,000 members, which like we've joked about it. <laughs> and we're like, no, that's never gonna happen. Like this, it's crazy talk, right? But it just keeps happening. And it's almost happening so fast that uh, we don't take the time to think about it. We're still just trying to help people. And what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is, number one, like I said, I don't know anything about ROI and, and all of that stuff, and I know it's important and you should definitely have somebody that's helping you that knows that. Um, but there are so many things that we do that you guys could do. And I've talked, we've talked at our lunch tables about it, about how you guys can use social media um, and how you guys can use Facebook and Instagram to connect with your members and get to know them more. Um, to where maybe you don't need to survey them because you can just see what they're saying and talk to them like as a person, right? Um, and so I wanna answer your questions about that. The other information that I have, and, and I'm gonna do mostly Q&A for this, to be honest, um, because I wanna help you guys, not just, I, I don't do this speech. So like, I know a lot of these guys go around and they have their whole thing, it's awesome. This is the first, I literally thought about it for the first time what I was gonna say this morning, to be honest. <laughs> um, the other thing that we have is our community is 70% women. Um, and I don't know that that's the normal demographic at most affiliates. I'm a woman. And so I'm the only female speaker that you guys have had the opportunity to ask questions to. So if you guys have questions about that demographic, how to reach them better and why um, we've successfully really got a strong demographic of, the, of women, specifically moms, I would say, um, I'd be happy to answer any of those questions for you. The other thing that we have is we have a uh, Facebook group of 15,000 people, um, a lot of whom have left their gyms and told us why. Um, so uh, not all of them, I would say, are dissatisfied. I would say a lot of them are not dissatisfied at all. They move, they can't afford it. Like you guys get it, right? Um, but if you guys have questions about what they say or, or maybe uh, anything along those lines, I'd be happy to answer those for you. Before I open it up for questions though, um, similar to how we had 30 people drive uh, from my gym back at CrossFit 801 to the games in 2009, when, by the way, no one had ever seen it on ESPN. It was still at the ranch. It wasn't cool. It wasn't broadcast. It was dirty. There were no CrossFit Games celebrities. None of that existed. Um, last month, actually a month ago, like right now, we had 200 complete strangers who had never met each other, most of whom left their kids um, and came with just their spouse or brought their kids um, 
and they came to a summer camp that we put on in, uh, we took over a kid's summer camp in upstate New York. Um, we rented it out for five days and these people came out and they paid um, us to come. We did not charge an amount of money where we tried to make any extra money at all. This was not an ROI thing. It was a community building event. This is how we spend our marketing dollars, to be honest. Um, so we have a little video because it's just too good not to show you what we've been able to build and we've never met these people and they've never met each other. And you guys should be working to build at your gyms. So a little round of applause for, for Jaime. He was, a, he was employee number two. <laughs> also used to work for Jason, just throwing it out there. <laughs> Jason's not here, it's fine. Is he? What? So this is uh, just from our summer camp video. Um, and to us, this is what community is. Don't mess it up, Jaime. Yay. We didn't make that on our phone, by the way. <laughs> uh, the guy in the Speedo wasn't even a member. It was somebody's husband. It was awesome. We were like, what? <laughs> um, so yeah, and that's the type of stuff that I would try to do at my affiliate, too. I think. Um, uh, that's, that's what people need. And we talked at our table yesterday about how you guys, all of your members have stressful lives, whether they're a stay-at-home mom or the CEO or an executive or the receptionist somewhere. Like all day long, they're under some sort of stress and they want to come in and have fun. And I remember when I first started my affiliate before um, CrossFit was like this big name and people expected something specific when they came in, it was somewhere to come, it was Cheers. It was the third place. It was where everybody knows your name, right? And um, so that's what we've worked to create. And I would love to uh, answer any questions that you guys might have about um, how to do that. So, yeah. What are some of the reasons people are saying they're leaving? Yeah, so um, you get the standard reasons, obviously. So his question was, what are the, some of the reasons that people are saying that they're leaving? You get some of the standard ones. Um, I can't afford it. Uh, that's, that's a sticky one. Some people really can't, right? Um, our, our program is $19, and some of, a lot of our members would never be able to afford uh, a CrossFit affiliate, and that's okay. Um, we're there to help them. But then it's like, can you really not afford it, or did you not see the value? There's a difference in that, and I'm sure you guys have talked about that in some of the other uh, talks. Um, people move, so we'll get people who move, and they can't find an affiliate that they felt comfortable in or liked um, in their new spot, or they're all too far away. Um, one of the things to keep in mind, too, is that not everybody, when they leave your gym, is leaving forever um, or is upset. So we do have people that are like, hey, I just had my baby. I know I'm not gonna get to the gym for the next three to six months. I joined street parking specifically for that. And those people, if they have a strong connection at the affiliate that they came from, always go back. And they tell us, thank you so much. You guys helped me out so much. I can finally go back to my gym, super stoked to do it. And we say, that's awesome. Have a blast. Thanks for being here with us. If you have another kid or move or something and you ever need us, we'll be here. Um, but there are the people who say other things, right, that we're dissatisfied. So some of the more common things that we have seen are that they get better coaching from us online when they've never seen us in person than they did at their gyms. I've seen that a lot. We give, every day we give um, demos for all of the movements that are in the workout, including all the substitutions. Um, we give a goal time. We tell them how to choose what weight they're going to use, like how many reps in a row they should be able to do with it. If it's a set of 21 of something, we tell them how long it should take and that if it takes longer than that on their first round, they should modify it and change it so that they can meet the goal time for the workout. Um, we, if they post a video of themselves on our Facebook group um, and use the hashtag SP coaching and ask for feedback on their movement, we'll give it to them. Um, we have six coaches now that do that for the first year and a half. Actually, for the first like two years, it was just Julian and I as far as uh, coaches go, but we've hired some more to help because just the volume. Uh, we have scaled options, so many scaling options. We have a full movement library. So, and that all sounds great, but I should not, it should not be possible for me to give you better coaching remotely. Like I'm like the like long distance boyfriend that slides into the DM. Like you guys, if your relationship is strong enough, it shouldn't matter what I have to offer because you have to, it to offer in person. So I would say that that, um, 
that happened, we, we've seen that a lot. We've actually had a few members, one in particular that I can remember who was kicked out of her gym. She was still paying drop-in fees to go. She was a street, she's a street parking member who's very busy and has a family, um, so uh, was no longer full-time at her affiliate, but would still pay drop-in like pretty regularly. Specifically, this was during the open. And um, she posted a street parking workout on her Instagram page and was kicked out of her gym. They told her like, if you're gonna be promoting them, then we don't want you here. And so, well, okay, well, that's really, like you should be, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you found a way to work out at home. Like, that's awesome. Now you don't get even her drop-in fees. And when she does become less busy, she's not coming back. So um, we have a lot of people, we have a very strong culture in street parking of we don't give a shit how fit you are, like as far as what your scores are. I care if you're getting better, but we have never, not one time in two and a half years, um, highlighted someone because they won the workout. Um, not for the open. Um, we don't even really do much for the open. We, we will put it in there so people um, can get our tips on it, but that's pretty much the only reason that we post it. Um, we have um, rewards that we give for consistency instead of performance. Um, we encourage people not to look at the whiteboard, to be honest, um, unless they know people on there. Like if uh, they're looking for their sister's score, their coworker, or they want to see mine or Julian's, great. Um, but we actually are pretty anti that comparison, especially, especially because they're not even doing the workout with in the same room as each other. Like, you guys all know how crazy people get during the open when it's like, who's this guy? Like, yeah, he's probably cheating the whole time, you know, and it's like somebody that you've never met. Like, that's us 365 if we if we encourage that. So we don't. And people say that that's a really fre breath of fresh air for them. They'll um, tell us that the culture at their affiliates was really bad when it came to that stuff and that they would come in and they'd be having a really bad day and feel this pressure to like use the RX weight um, or this pressure to, ha to get a certain score or to give 100% and um, they weren't in the right headspace for it. So they would end up just not working out and then that not working out turned into not them not wanting to go and then scrolling Instagram and finding us and being like, I could just do this on my own and I don't have to worry about all that drama. Obviously every gym has drama, we have drama. I mean, people, you know, complaining about each other. Anytime you get a group of people together, that's gonna happen. But our culture is that we just straight up don't allow it. We have offered several times to give people a refund um, and cancel their membership for them, no problem, if they seem like they don't understand or appreciate our culture on our private groups. We have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, nobody's actually ever asked for it. Uh, I would say that those are like the main, as far as dissatisfied reasons, um, people just, th they want to feel like they're being paid attention to. And um, it's tough when you hire a coach who's maybe, um, and I'm not like trying to like uh, put anything on anyone. A anyone from any demographic can be a great coach, but you got to be careful if you've got the like 24 year old dude who's trying to go to the games he's gonna be and he's a coach in a class he might get super pumped to coach more the other people that are like him or the cute new girl or something like that and you get the mom who just had a baby and has been trying to go to work and then you know take care of her kids and feel already feels like crap about herself and literally gets no coaching whatsoever in a class um we have a lot of those people that will say stuff like that um, and so it's, it's just a culture of that everyone is important um, and we don't, we don't celebrate people for uh, performance and it's gone a long way. But that's, uh, those are some things that we hear a lot. What else? In the back. Oh. No, go ahead, it's okay. Yeah, so um, let me ask the question back to you guys. Her question was about like what social platforms we use and how we use them to build our community. Raise your hand if your gym has an Instagram page. Keep your hand up if you use it for something other than promoting your business. Okay, so cool. This, a bunch, some hands went down. So what I've been suggesting to the tables, so we have, we have a public Instagram page, we have a private Instagram page, we have a public Facebook page, and a private members only Facebook group. Um, we use social media to interact with our members more than we use it to promote our program. And then our members promote our program on social media. It's like a really weird 
thing, right? So um, if your Instagram page that you have for your gym right now is not following each and every single one of your members, you're missing a huge opportunity um, to find out who your demographic is and what's going on in their lives. If you're not using that page to comment on their posts about their kids' birthday parties and about the wedding they went to last week and about the new dress size that they're in now and about um, whatever. If you're not using it to see that Mary's grandma died last week, to know that when she walks into the gym and be like, hey, Mary, like, so sorry, I saw what happened. I saw your post, like, you know what? We're just glad you're here. If you're not using that to see that, um, Bob or whatever hasn't been to the gym in two weeks, but you see he's been like in Vegas and then Yosemite and then he's like partying and all this stuff. It's like, cool, Bob, like put down the beers and come back to the gym, bro. And comment that from the gym's Instagram page, you're missing a huge opportunity. Um, that's what we do. So uh, like I said, for the first year and a half, we didn't really have employees. The um, employee that came after Jaime. So the very first person that we hired was a support person um, to just straight up help me answer emails because it was getting, I was doing them all myself. Uh, and then we hired Jaime who has helped us with a lot of the apparel stuff and the website and just whatever, he helps us with everything. Um, the next person we hired, her full-time job was to comment on every single post using the hashtag street parking. From our um, members Instagram page, we follow all 15,000 of our members. We see, I mean, we don't comment on all of their posts, um, but we see them and we can scroll through them and we can see who these people are and see what's going on. And um, because a lot of our members are private, so if you don't request to follow them, you're not gonna see it. Um, I personally follow some of our most OG members because I wanna make sure that I never miss that stuff. Because when they came and there was only 700 of them, it was really easy for me to give them a lot of attention. Well, with so many now, I don't wanna miss the posts from the people who helped us build street parking to what it is now. I wanna make sure that they still feel connected to me. So um, Julian, for example, he unfollowed all but 10 people on his own Instagram page. Um, it's like family and our, and our coworkers, not even all of them actually. <laughs> and he just follows the hashtag street parking and that's all he sees in his feed. He's blocked a lot of people too that just are annoying. But um, so that's all he sees. And so if he picks up his phone and starts, you know, scrolling through Instagram, as we all do, that's all he'll see and he comments and likes and makes sure that he sees what's going on. Um, so that's like a huge thing. The other way that we use Instagram that I think you guys could use it, um, is we go live and do our workouts. Our members see us do the next day's workout almost seven days a week. Um, and not just Julian and I, because again, like both of us are former games athletes. So you guys know how it is like, cool, that's awesome. Congrats, Julian, on your perfect movement and doing that workout in 12 minutes. It's gonna take me 30 minutes. Our whole staff does it. So they come to our house. We still film everything at our house. Um, but they'll see that some of our staff members use a scaled weight. They're doing banded pull-ups or ring rows. Um, I might have a sandbag and Julian's got a barbell and one of our staff members has the dumbbells because for us it's all about choose what equipment you want to do it with. And so we highlight that. Um, but they see us and they see us trip on the box and they see, um, you know, us dying on the ground or, you know, not looking so perfect during the workout or just being, they'll, we'll tell them like, man, I really don't want to work out today or I'm super sore. They, and they connect with us on that. So um, having the trainers do stuff like that. Um, something that we've been doing recently, just actually just two weeks now maybe, is we have six coaches uh, now. It's myself, Julian, a couple that used to be members that used to have a gym in LA, sold their gym in LA and they're going to be moving up here. Um, we live in Vancouver, Washington, which is like 20 minutes from here. Um, and then uh, Molly, who was on my team at NorCal and does all of our nutrition, and one other coach. Six days a week, each day, one coach is responsible for the Instagram story. And we just take it over, both to give coaching tips, but also to just allow the community to get to know us. So, like yesterday, I listed all the random injuries that I've had, which is a long list, and then I took yesterday's workout and I showed if I still had this injury, this is how I would have done this workout today. If I still had this injury, this is how I would have done this today. Julian's on there today on our, and this is just on the, the private page because we're about our members and we let our members bring other people. We don't put it all out there for everybody. We focus on the people who have already bought into us 
and we would let them bring everybody else. So this is on the, the private page. He got on there today, showed how he made his morning coffee. He might show how he had breakfast, you know, what he had for breakfast. He'll chat with them while he's like on the walk with our dog. And then he put on there like, hey, what do you guys want to know about me, fitness or non-fitness related? Like, let me get to know you guys. Um, let your members connect with your coaches. Maybe the, the stay-at-home mom doesn't know that she has a connection with 24-year-old bro Brad, but I bet if Brad showed that he was into, I don't know, um, Harry Potter or something like that, and he was a Harry Potter nerd, she'd be like, what, I love Harry Potter, and immediately she comes into class and they have that connection. So getting to know more about the actual human side of them and them seeing that of us. Um, as well. Julian will go live on our Facebook group um, three, four times a week with no agenda whatsoever with a cup of coffee and just chat with the members. What's up guys? What are you guys doing today? Most of them are probably at work um, and he just, you know, chats with them. If they have work questions about the workout, he'll answer those. If they want to talk about, I don't know, the NBA finals, they'll talk about that and it's, it's, a, it's a relationship. Um, so that's, that's some of the ways that, that we use uh, social media that I think you guys could 100% do. And if you're not doing, is a huge mistake um, to, to making people feel really engaged and involved. Does that answer your question? Cool. You had a question. Yeah. So she was asking, like, how do you encourage people to use the hashtag? Because let's be honest, not everybody is like social media savvy. Um, so if you're wanting to see people post, how can you get people to use your hashtag? So something that we did in the very beginning, um, now it's just kind of ingrained in the culture and people know if they use it that they're, they're going to get comments from us. But in the beginning, they didn't know that. So something that we used to do, and you guys could totally do this very easily, is for like two days, we'd be like, all right, guys, for the next two days, post a video or a picture of you doing the workout. Make sure to use this hashtag because that's the only way we're going to see it. And we're going to draw a winner for a free pair of nanos. We would do that every weekend for like six months we did that. Um, and it, so you guys, they're not working out at home, but it's like, hey guys, um, we're, for the month of whatever, July, it's gym selfie month. And if you post a selfie at the gym and use the hashtag CrossFit whatever, we're gonna do a drawing for three free months. And all you gotta do, every time you post a selfie here or a picture or a video from inside the gym, you get an entry into this drawing and it gets people kind of like on that train. Um, and, and for you guys especially, most people have like what, like 200 or so Instagram followers, right? And who, who are those people? It's their coworkers and their friends and their family, a lot of whom live in the same area as your gym. So if they're posting like these random gym selfies, they're gonna go to work and their coworkers are gonna be like, Susan, what in the world with the gym? What's with the gym selfies? She's like, oh my gosh, it's so fun. Like at our gym, we're doing this contest. And if I post a selfie, I could win this cool prize. And now they're like, oh, that sounds like, cool, like a different kind of a gym. Like that's fun. Um, so yeah, that's kind of one of the ways you can get the hashtag going is by incentivizing them to use it. Did you have a question? There was a question over here. No? What? Up? Oh, yes? I'm a coach at a gym. <laughs> Oh my gosh, kick her out. <laughs> so that's another, actually, to go back to his question about like what have people said about why, why they quit. Um, we use Wattify. Wattify does not give us the option to not have Rx or Rx Plus on uh, the platform. So when we enter the workout of the day, um, and we only pretty much use Wattify for the logging system at this point. We post the workouts every day on Instagram and we have a members only website, which is where people can find the workout, the description, the demo video, like all that stuff. But we have incentives for them to log their scores, which I can talk about in a second. Um, in our culture, in the culture of street parking, Rx is only a thing because it's on Wattify and we steer people away from it real quick. So we have had people who are new members who come from like 
CrossFit, die hard, I want to be the top of the leaderboard background. And they'll be like, ugh, bunch of people marking RX today when they definitely subbed the double unders for singles or something like that. And um, we'll be like, cool, did, did you get a good workout today? And they'll be like, yeah, if they would have marked, not marked RX, would you have gone faster? No? You would just, oh, your, score, your time would have been the same, right? So um, we've had to really, uh, and it's gotten a lot easier, to be honest, because our members that have been around for two years, they'll answer it before we do. They're like, we don't even care about that here. Just make sure you know how you did the workout in case we retest it, nobody cares. And they're like, oh, okay. And it takes some people like, we, I mean, it's like an AA meeting sometimes on our Facebook page. Because they're like, yes, um, I used to compete at local competitions. And for the first six months, I hated all of you because you marked the workout wrong. And now I don't care. <laughs> and I just work out for me. And we're like, oh my God, thank you. So, and that was us too. I remember when we started, and it was even crazier for me because I was pregnant. But like, for some reason, I felt like I should still win every workout. And we sat these women, I was like, who, who are these people? And beating me in the workout, like this is ridiculous. And um, I'm actually friends with some of them now because of course, what did I do? I'm like, let me go look up this person on IG. I'm like, oh, this lady actually looks pretty legit. And then I'll see like in their profile, like former team, whatever, at the CrossFit Games. I'm like, oh, geez. And now I don't even ever look at it. And I get, I would, I would be surprised if most days I'm in like the top 50 of our leaderboard or 100 of our leaderboard. And it does not affect my workout at all whatsoever, right? Um, so that's another huge piece of our culture and something that people hate about their gyms is how sticklers people are about that and how they feel um, dumb or like, we actually have a lot of members who have never ever stepped foot into side a CrossFit gym, ever. So we really protect those people too because we would never want them to feel stupid or like they did something wrong or like they don't know the lingo. So we try to educate and then we just, just let it go. Just let it go. I had something else, what did I say I was gonna mention? Thank you. Um, so marketing, people are like, what's your guys' marketing budget? Do you do Facebook ads, do you do this or that? We've boosted a few Facebook posts. Um, we don't really do Facebook ads. What we do is when somebody logs 75 workouts on Wattify, we send them a hoodie that's worth $40 and ship it to wherever they live in the world and send them a handwritten note saying, good job, and we're so proud of you. Um, that's probably, I don't even want to ask Jaime how much money we spent on that because he definitely was concerned about it when we first hired him. <laughs> it's like maybe like a t-shirt would be a better idea, like a, like a sticker. <laughs> um, uh, but people, what do they do when they get the hoodie? What do you guys think they do? They put that thing on, they post it holding the handwritten card. I love my gym. They say, say I love my gym so much. Thank you. Like, I never thought I could do 75 workouts in four months. I'm so proud of myself. And like, sometimes it, it looks like we, it's like a pyramid scheme. Like, hey, sign up under me and use this code. Like, it, it, that's what it sounds like sometimes. Like, the way that they word it. Like, if you ever need programming, like, this is the best. Like, join me. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> people are going to think we're paying these people. Um, but it's because especially for the community that works out at home. Um, and like my heart obviously goes out to the moms. No one tells them good job all day long, ever. Like very rarely. And so to get a comment from street parking or from myself or Julian and a handwritten note from one of our staff is more appreciation and like recognition than they've gotten for who knows how long. Um, the guy in the video who was like lifted up on the shoulders because he helped with the puzzle. That guy was one of the least fit people probably at that summer camp. And they were, we, that's why we added in the puzzles. They weren't physical challenges that we were doing there. There was no like, like winner of who was the most fit at summer camp. It was not a competition. We will never ever do a competition. I'll tell you that much right now. That if people want that, there's plenty of places for them to go find it. Um, the girl who uh, got to represent her team for the double unders, First of all, every person on the team that attempted to do the double unders got points for their team. And then they found the person who had the most and they got to like compete for their team. She said that was one of the best days of her life because she got to do the double unders at, at summer camp for her team. So um, 
so yeah, we have incentives. We also have a 365 shirt where that's like we were joking at the table at the lunch before this, where like if you see somebody roll up to a street parking meetup or if you see um, an Instagram post of somebody wearing a 365 shirt, that's like that's like rolling up somewhere and seeing somebody wearing game shorts. You're like, oh shit, that guy was in the games? Like, that's so awesome. Like, they, they recognize the 365 shirt. So once they've logged 365 workouts, they wear that thing all the time. We've actually just um, started working on creating a, a 1,000 workout uh, banner that they can hang up in their workout space. Uh, 80 to 85% of our members, I would say, and this is not a statistic that I know exactly, but my best guess, work out at home. Um, so some of them, do still go and do our programming at affiliates. We actually have a lot of gym owners and coaches that are members. And why wouldn't you? Like you have all these resources for just workout ideas and scaling options and like fun little things to do. We can't control it. So, I mean, we've had members be like, hey, my old affiliates using your programming and you should, you know. We're like, oh, as long, somebody there is a paying member and um, we appreciate it if they tell them that they get workouts from us, but um, we're also happy to help, you know, so, uh, yeah. How do you cover yourselves on a legal side for liability? Yeah, so we have a liability like waiver when they sign up, just similar to like any like online fitness program. We had somebody help us write that up for sure. And then obviously we do our best to coach them and give them advice. Um, for their abilities and but uh, you know just like any online program on the waiver it says consult with your doctor or whatever before yeah you mentioned nutrition what what, what does that offer or entail yeah so um, we didn't start out with nutrition other than like us just randomly giving advice um, but I think when we were close to a year in we decided we wanted to do a nutrition challenge <laughs> the very first one, we sent them a PDF score sheet to print out um, at home and keep track of their scores and like send us photos of it. I'm not kidding. Um, and we've come a long way. We now use Wattify Rise when we do um, nutrition challenges. But the nutrition in general, when they sign up, they get a welcome email and access to our members only website, which is full of recipes and also full of just some basic nutritional information like um, portion sizes using like the hand measurements where like you get two of these for your protein and one of these and you know that whole thing and we encourage everybody to start there and to find consistency with it before they worry about anything else we do have um, $50 templates so Molly and I um, kind of came together to talk about our program is about simplifying it for people it doesn't need to be complicated you don't to get fit you don't need to be doing Sorry, but you don't need percentage Olympic lifting work. Like most people, you just don't. Um, it's great, and if you're into it, we highly encourage it, go for it. But we, we like to keep everything super simple. So we weren't gonna put out like this overly complicated nutrition thing with the dumbbell burpees and you know, whatever. So um, I had a lot of experience with the zone because CrossFit in 2007 and 2008, that's what you did. Um, I had. I had given the nutrition lecture at the seminars for years also, so I had to know like all that stuff. Molly had a lot of experience with macros and we obviously like looked into RP and like some of the more popular things. And we were like, okay, what's, cause all of them work, right? We can all agree that the reason that those programs are successful is cause they work. What's necessary and what is just not? And what's over the top and it's just like a gimmick. So we took the simple stuff and we created a nutrition template that's basically, um, if you're male or female, what your goal is, either fat loss or performance slash maintenance. We also have a postpartum template, which is a little bit um, different. Uh, and then it's how much you weigh. And it gives you portion sizes, a food list, and it's very basic and simple. Um, and then if they want one-on-one -on -one coaching, Molly and Michelle, an, um, another girl, are available to do that. And people will do it for a short amount of time. What we highly encourage them to do is join the challenges because it's kind of like getting the one-on-one -on -one coaching for four weeks and learning along with a group of everybody else so you guys can answer each other's questions and help each other. Um, so that's what we do for nutrition, yeah. Our phones. And we still, to this day, the daily demo is filmed on somebody's iPhone and edited on somebody's iPhone. Um, we didn't know how to do it and we had never really done it before. I loved Instagram already, like I was pretty big into it just because um, I had done like the NC Lab and I just enjoyed 
I guess, posting pictures of myself, videos, whatever. Um, so I had, but I had also seen like CrossFit media behind the scenes and that was like a whole huge production and we couldn't do any of that. Um, people just want connection. They don't care how nice it looks. They don't know. And honestly, like we found on our personal pages, especially if something's highly, highly edited, the way that all of us are wired now, we know that Instagram has turned into a, just an advertising platform. That's all it is, right? And so when you guys are scrolling, if you see something that looks really professional, you almost know immediately, and I'm sure that none of us even think about it, you know it's an advertisement, right? Like your brain just like recognizes that, oh, that's polished, like keep going, keep going. But when I post a video that I made on my phone, like selfie style, I get way more engagement from it. People watch it way longer, they comment on it way more. It's more real. And Instagram got popular because it was more real than a lot of other things and then it kind of became glossy. Um, so I would encourage you guys not to worry so much about it being like perfect and polished all the time. Um, Another thing, kind of going back to her question, if you don't have somebody at least a couple times a week, and I wasn't here for Stu's talk, so I might be like beating a dead horse with some of the stuff that he talked about, um, but if you don't have somebody rolling around, like making an Instagram story, not the coach of the class, by the way, like maybe someone else, so the coach can actually coach, um, rolling around, highlighting people like, yo, look at, you know, this dude's wall balls today, Dave's killing it, and tagging Dave in the, in the story, huge missed opportunity because what's Dave going to do with that Instagram story if he sees it later that day? He's going to repost that thing right away and they're going to be like, what? That gym looks awesome. You know, this is where you go? Yeah, bro, come with me next time. Um, so people love to see themselves. We asked them, um, actually Julian asked a really good question to, um, was it you? No, it was the, it was the where's, your, where's your friend? Oh, there he is. Your brother. He asked him, he's like, who's your, who's your favorite current CrossFit Games athlete who's still competing? And he said, Brent Fikowski. And we we're like, can you imagine how excited you would be if you posted a video of your workout and Brent Fikowski was like, right on, man. Good pacing. Good job. <laughs> yeah, good pacing. <laughs> what would you do the next day? You post that shit again. You're like, Brent Fikowski, he's, he's, he's on it. That's how they look at you. That's how they look at their trainers. Um, so obviously that needs to happen in person 100%. But if you thought they were so awesome that you took the time to film it and put it on your page, now they're like, oh man, like I, we, have celeb we have street parking celebrities who, because so much of what we do is in the community and we don't put it on our public pages, they, uh, like when they show up to the meetups, like the summer camp, it's like, oh my gosh, that's Blair. I always watch Blair's videos. We encourage all of our members to follow the hashtag street parking. They comment on each other's stuff all day. They know each other so well and they meet up with each other without us doing anything. There's at least two or three meetups a weekend that they'll just send us photos of and be like, oh, the San Diego street parkers got together. And that, I mean, if we can do that virtually, you guys, can, you guys have so much more power to do that in person. Um, and actually one of the main reasons that I wanted to speak because I was like, I, I don't know, like I don't have a gym, like I don't know anything about business, I don't have a PowerPoint or anything cool like that. Um, it's because I didn't want you guys to walk away and close the door of the office and start um, worrying about building the business, which again is very important, and forget about some of the simple stuff that you can do um, that makes a huge difference and just makes people feel uh, special and seen and, and um, they, they don't want to, they don't want to miss out. Um, so yeah, what else? <laughs> I'll tell you this too. Um, the cheesier, the better when, uh, so in August, last year, we, August is that like weird month for fitness because people get super stoked on getting fit for summer and having like the summer bod. But then it's like August and going into the fall and the winter, it's like uh, people kind of lose motivation a little bit. And um, so we're like, we don't have anything really going on in August, like let's do a challenge, what could we do? And so we did the Julian versus Miranda challenge. You could take, you could easily replicate this with two trainers in your gym. And it was $20 to sign up, half the, do that and build that community. Um, yeah. I mean, there's so much downtime when you're a trainer at a gym, so much downtime. 
and it's almost like exhausting to not have anything to do. You can have them mop the floor for sure. I know that's like, that's like a popular thing, but also they're the trainer or hey, even better, Joe, stay logged in as yourself. And as Joe, who coaches the noon class, comment as yourself and be like, hey, I haven't seen you since last week. Like, what's up? Miss you, bro, or whatever. Like, oh, tomorrow's workout's awesome. Hope you're going to be here. Comment as yourself and build relationships with our members, especially on the ones that are going to expect it the least um, and that don't get a lot of attention in class or you notice they're always in the back. Let those people always be in the back. Don't try to like put more attention on them in class because they honestly probably don't want it. But if they can get attention when it's a little bit more comfortable, that might strengthen that relationship so much. Anything else? No? Yep. With um, members that post themselves doing the workouts or whatever, have you ever run into or had any issues with um, them from other members getting unsolicited coaching? Or oh, yeah. Like oh, big time. <laughs> well, first of all, on our Facebook group, we have, I don't even know how many former coaches, current coaches, former owners, or current owners. So a lot of the advice is not always bad. It's just way too much. Um, or yeah, somebody will be like, I've, se I've seen some stuff that I completely disagree with what they say. Um, I won't like be rude about it, but I'll be like, awesome, I can see, I can see what he's saying. Um, here's what I would suggest. Here's where I suggest you start. And because they're paying me as their coach, my hope would be that they would be like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Like, I'll, I'll look at that. Um, but uh, we also don't want to make people feel dumb for their suggestions. If it's really bad or really over the top or aggressive, I've um, messaged those people privately, not like blasted them like publicly where everyone can see it. Be like, hey, I really disagreed with like how you told that person that they just, I'm, there's been a couple times where it's like, you know what? You should probably just do the easier version of the workout. And it's like, eh, like even if it's true, like not the best way to word it. So I'll, I'll message them privately and we're I mean guys I don't know if you're like picking up on what I'm throwing down this is a, for us it's so much more than posting a workout and then just like working out all day which honestly um, you guys want to talk about like orange theory and competition every games athlete with half a brain at this point has tried to start an online program right and they think it's like oh well uh, Julian Miranda they just throw the workout up there and then they I don't know what they think we do all day long but it's policing 15,000 people on Instagram and Facebook and making sure that everybody feels important and constantly creating more coaching content and constantly doing these challenges and planning these events and stuff like that. Um, it's no different than the affiliate. If you guys have something strong, it doesn't matter how many competitors open up in your area. Like people want to be where they are happy and where their family is, right? So um, that's what we've created. And, people have a really hard time figuring out what it is that we're doing. Um, and then even when they see it, because I know a lot of them have had memberships and signed up, it's just, they realize how much work it is. And you guys are in that same boat, 100%. I'm just curious, uh, you mentioned Yeah, so I, his question was, what was your favorite thing about being an affiliate owner? What was the thing that like, you didn't like the most when you owned an actual location? And then the same for the online community. Um, obviously, in-person relationships are just fun. Um, we have that now with our staff because we do have like a pretty good sized staff. So we have a group that gets together and we can razz each other and work out together and push each other and, and things like that. But at first it was just the two of us and it was pretty lonely to be honest. Like we were giving all of ourselves to people we never met in person at all. And um, so seeing that transformation in person, knowing their kids, like knowing their um, families and going to their homes and getting together. That was definitely my favorite part of uh, owning the actual gym. And I love coaching people, to be honest. So I can't, 
I can comment on how to like, hey, like, maybe try staying back in your heels a little bit more, lift your chest up, you know, go a little bit low. I can comment that, but I can't see the change in real time and in person and see them light up when they figure it out and give them a high five right away. So it's, um, I mean, I, again, it's like a long, long distance relationship. I still love them, but it's not, you know, can't kiss them every night, you know? Uh, and then I would say my least favorite part of owning the actual affiliate was having to deal with some of the drama stuff in person because right now I can just shut the I'm like I can't deal with this right now with this Facebook close <laughs> like I will I will yo uh, baby can you please get on Facebook because there's this post and I just can't, like today I can't do it I'm like I got it I'll go do it you know or we'll do it later just close it down but in person if it's happening right in front of you if there's like someone complaining or um, some sort of drama or whatever you know someone being like a little bit of like a cancer or something like you got to do you gotta deal with that in person and that, that was tough. I didn't have a lot of that at my gym, um, maybe because it was before it became super competitive and all of that jazz. Um, and then just like cleaning their, the bathrooms and cleaning the equipment, putting that shit away, I don't gotta do any of that, you know? So, <laughs> um, for the online community, the, my very favorite thing is that we're able to help the number of people that we can, that we do. Um, people ask us all the time, like, what's your vision? Like, how many members? The only thing that we do talk about and go back to a lot is that we would like to um, do something with the Spanish-speaking community. Julian speaks very fluent Spanish, so does his mom. It's a huge demographic for us. Um, the, a huge demographic for us is people who follow, have followed his journey um, from where he lived in LA and when he was training his cousin. They had, he had an Instagram page that was called the Asada Boys for a while that was like, him coaching his cousin and his friend to mariachi music basically and uh people loved it because it's that culture right and there's a huge demographic there that they'll they'll never be able to afford a crossfit gym or have time to go to that we want to help those people um so yeah the online thing that we love so much is just being able to help the number of people and to help them connect with each other um, from all over the world it's crazy um and then my least favorite thing i would say again is just like I, w I wish I could meet every single one of these people. I wish I could see them all in person and, and tell them good job. Um, but I mean, that's probably not possible to meet every single one. We have talked about like renting a couple RVs and just driving across the country and showing up at people's houses. Eventually that might happen, um, but yeah. Uh, obviously on, in, on social media, there's negativity, trolls and all of that. Oh yeah. How do you prefer to handle it to kind of damage control? Do you just block them? Do you respond and be professional? What's, what, what have you found to be the best way to approach someone like that that's trying to be toxic? Yeah, so her question was like social media, people have a lot more confidence in being dickheads basically. <laughs> um, I'll hit this from a few angles. Uh, me personally, I have a pretty big social media following, a lot of which was gained through competing in CrossFit. Um, I've lost, in building this 15,000 member online business, I've lost roughly 15,000 Instagram followers because I want to put the same message on my personal Instagram that I believe in for my business, which is no longer muscle ups and rope climbs and com competitive stuff. And a lot of the loss came when I was pregnant. And that was tough for me, like, because those people, were the people who wanted the Miranda abs and not the Miranda pregnancy. But guess what? Those people were never going to sign up for street parking and they don't get it. And they're the last people I would ever want on my Facebook group. I'll tell you that much because they would be the dude that's like worried about everybody marking RX plus, right? Um, so it's, it's very interesting where you have to choose what your message is and not worry about the likes and like how many people are going to like think it's amazing like or how hot the chick is that you used in your like promotional post or whatever, but like that you're actually reaching the right people. And so on my personal page, that's been very important. It's very important on our public page. Uh, Julian, same thing. Like he's had to like really like, hey, this is our message. This is who I am. I'm not the dude trying to go to the games anymore. I like to work out with my son and I like to use a sandbag and dumbbells. And there are hundreds of CrossFit Games wannabes or CrossFit Games athletes out there that people can follow if that's what they're after. I want to represent for this demographic, this is who we are. 
Um, for me personally, if people are mean on my page, it depends on the day. Sometimes I can be really sarcastic back to them. And then my, the, so the street parking members are really mean, usually back to that person. So I have like a little built-in like posse that gets real mad real fast. Um, we don't really have that too much on our private pages. So inside of our community, if that happens, we'll delete it. And th that's the person, if they're on our members page, they're a paying member. So that's the person that will ask them if they would like a refund and we'd be happy to cancel their membership for them that we just don't do that on our pages. Um, if it's on our public street parking page, we'll delete it. Yeah. Yes, did you have something to add? Oh, come up here. What a round of applause for this guy. Okay, so like over the course when we got first asked to come speak up at this seminar summit a summit whatever um, I was like man like we don't have an affiliate like how are we gonna be able to relate to these people and now that we're kind of closing things out and we have the lunch with the, the people and everything it, it it's an eye-opener it's like oh actually we we do have a lot that we can give you guys because Everything that street parking is can be applied to an affiliate, 100%. Make it so that your members don't ever want to leave your place. Know what you're good at and know what you're not good at. So of course, like we have all these other speakers here that drop knowledge on you about what they're really, really good at, right? So if you know that you can relate to that, well then hit that nail on the head and drive that avenue. But you have to have somebody who's gonna build that foundation to your gym. Right, that, that community, because if you don't have that, then you have nothing, right? And then there's the avenue of, okay, well, shoot, my gym's not, I'm not charging a lot. Maybe you should charge more. What are you gonna offer if you charge more? You better, you better dial that in. Because if you're, not, if you're just gonna charge more because it's expensive in your area, but you're not gonna change the brand, then you're gonna lose all your members, 100%. So if you're gonna up your rates, right, and you want to be a place where people don't wanna leave you, you better be providing all that content, all that information that you know, and just drive it right back into that community. Don't use the excuse that, oh, I'm not good at creating content. We weren't. Create it yourself, upload it. Create your own member stories. Capture their story, put it up there, make it so that they have a second home. If your members are having a hard time getting to the gym, and you're gonna be like, shoot, I'm gonna lose that person because I don't know what to do. Really, you don't know what to do? Why don't you upload your workout on your private social media page so that way your member can do a workout at home as opposed to having them run to us because we're gonna do that work for them. I want every one of you guys in here to succeed, but the reality of it is, not everybody is because it's a lot of hard work. The two years that we put into this I mean, we were married for the, that was like our first year of marriage. Our son, you know, that was our first time with that pregnancy. We just, we had to get to know each other. Like, we had to do counseling as a couple. <laughs> like, seriously, the amount of money that went into counseling, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but all that stuff helped so much because it set who we are, right? And we kind of pushed that into our business. It's unbelievable the amount of information you guys have access to nowadays that you guys didn't have access to 10 years ago. You know, so it blows my mind when people are like, oh, I don't do Facebook so much or Instagram because I just, I'm not good with it. Good luck. We're in 2019. If you're having issues with Instagram and Facebook, to shift your mindset into, yeah, it is a waste of time if you're actually gonna waste your time on social media. If you're gonna waste your time looking at magazines and gun stuff, the NBA and sports, there's a time and a place for that. But just know that if your business is failing, that means you're not putting enough time into your business. So yeah, I get fired up about this because it's like, you know, even some of the other speakers are like, oh, what are you guys doing here? If you guys don't feel we can if we wanted to. <laughs> and we do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And we build a community in our area of people that wouldn't want to leave because we'd be applying the same exact thing right back into it. We vomit the amount of content that goes out. 
Miranda just literally uploaded all her, her injuries on the story that she was talking about yesterday. And I was going through the story. I was like, damn, that's really good. Like, literally, how do it cleans if you have a cast on your freaking ankle or whatever? Like, all these injuries. We're going to film that this upcoming week. This in soon, we're going to film all those modifications and everything. Like, you're, Because if a member breaks their ankle and they're in a boot, they don't want to go to the gym. They're like, oh, I can't do this anymore. Well, actually, you can. You can. And if your coaches know that they can, they'd be there to be like, hey, come in tomorrow. I'm going to help you modify stuff. Don't worry about it. You're going to get your workout in. Don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple. So yeah, those ideas, run with it. But a lot of times people have ideas and then they just, like, they'll throw it out there. They're like, oh, look, this would be a really cool idea. And then two weeks later, that idea is gone. And they don't hold on to it. Because you get distracted, most likely, by all the stuff that you shouldn't be focusing on, like social media. So, you know, I really I just want to bring it home and just keep it simple, care about your community, know what you're good at, and uh, yeah, that's it. So. I have no idea what time it is. Oh, yeah. To let you guys... Okay.